And now I want to introduce the new CEO of Cambium Learning, Ashley Anderson Zantop, to, um, to present the Power of Women Awards. I was um, thinking as I was heading out the door of my hotel room this morning, how great a dress is as an outfit for a leader. And after I got out the door and got into the elevator, I realized that this dress does not have any pockets. <laughs> so while it's still a great outfit for a women leader, um, I can't fit these lovely cards that my daughter Alexandra made me so that I wouldn't forget any of the amazing things that I need to say about this year's winners. So unfortunately, you're going to have to watch me like fumble and shuffle with the amazing cards that my daughter made me. Um, I will say this, though. Alex, thank you for helping me with this. Durable success is a team sport. I'm really glad you and your dad are on my team. And Deborah, I will say this. Thank you very much for your, for your comments um, and your opening remarks. They mean so much, and especially so in this room of amazing leaders and amazing change agents. And when we're thinking about this room of amazing leaders and amazing change agents, we also have to thank Deborah Quazzo, Claire Zhao, the ASU GSV Summit team for actually creating the space and for making it a priority that we actually invest the time to connect with one another, to support one another, and to celebrate one another. That is community, that is leadership, and that is change versus what we experienced 11 years ago when this event didn't happen. So just join me in one more round of applause for Claire and Deborah and the summit team. For all those reasons and more, on behalf of Cambium Learning Group, I have to say that we are proud and honored to sponsor this opportunity, to support one another, and to celebrate all of the accomplishments and hard work that the literally hundreds of women in this room and on these docks <laughs> represent your work truly is an inspiration and we're we're proud to be a sponsor i do want to just do a quick call out to the strong talented women leaders from cambium who are here with me today if you could just quickly raise your hand when i call your name president of learning a to z lisa omasta <laughs> sprinting from the airport after a delayed flight uh, Cambium Chief People Officer, Melissa Yates May. <laughs> Vice President of Strategic Marketing at Learning A to Z, Damara Santiago. <laughs> and Senior Director, Emergent Bilingual Curriculum, and the co-founder of the absolutely stunningly amazing Lexia English Language Development, Maya Goodall. Thank you. Thank you. So as I said, it, success is a team sport. It's also really important that we acknowledge the folks who have encouraged us and continue to support us um, in sponsoring and supporting this event, including retiring CEO John Campbell, who is a tireless accomplice and champion, a mentor and a friend, and irreplaceable, and also all of our Cambium team and our incredible transformational sponsor and steward, Veritas Capital. So as I was thinking about uh, the purpose of today's uh, festivities, uh, and I was reflecting on the winners <laughs> this year, the purpose of this event is honoring the power of women to change the world for good so that all people have equal access to the future and when I think about our honorees this year, all five of them do such an exemplary job of living that purpose. 
And this year, the Power of Women Awards adds a new category of honoree, recognizing civic and philanthropic leaders driving really inno innovative and meaningful and durable change in education. Our first honoree is just such a leader, dedicating her career to the transformation of education through philanthropic entrepreneurship. Kim Smith is entrepreneur in residence at Cambiar Education and former CEO and co-founder of Pahara Institute. Kim also co-founded New Schools Venture and spent time with Teach for America, all extraordinarily high impact organizations changing the shape of education today. And you know, I had a chance to speak with Kim and she described herself and her role in the ecosystem as an enabler, a connector of the amazing people who get things done. And she's asking the big tough questions like, how do we keep the innovation engine going and re-architect the system so that it's neither public nor private, but something else that works? You know, and she talked to me a little bit about some of the lessons that she's learned <laughs> and the advice that she might give other women who are striving in the space as well. And she reflected to me that often in the early parts of her career as the only woman in the room, she might have felt the need to be apologetic for her more kind of relational community building style, something that's maybe more traditionally attributed to women. Uh, but she's clear and she's unapologetic because it does take different ways of thinking, different ways of organizing, different ways of getting things done to actually be effective. And our differences make our teams and environments more effective. So please join me in congratulating Kim Smith. Kim, please come accept your award. Okay. <laughs> this one is, this one is um, really fun uh, for me based on some of the conversations that she and I have already had. Jane Swift has such a unique resume of accomplishments that it's really difficult to know where to start when talking about Jane. She's president and executive director of Learn Launch and former governor of the state of Massachusetts, among many other things. And She's devoted her career to making change by working in public office, in policy, in legislation, and as an educator as well in the classroom and on faculty, and now as a leader of a nonprofit who's focused on leveraging innovation to empower school and district leaders to embrace and manage change. You know, she was in the public eye as the governor of, the Ma of Massachusetts well before it was common to talk about bringing your whole self to work or being your authentic self at work, and more particularly at a time when women, many of us still in this room, felt under pressure to leave quite a bit of our authentic selves at home in order to be successful. And, you know, Jane was the first woman to lead a state while having twins, and she was certainly not thanked for it by many then but we see her now, and we recognize her, and we thank her for it. You know, furthering her brave example of showing up for any situation as your whole self, Jane continues to generously and openly share her deep grief that she's living through now with the loss of her husband. And when I asked her about what she's proud of and what's important to her, she shared, the rise of authentic women leaders and dads is enormously important. It's an enormously important generational shift that will impact all industries, but especially education that has always relied disproportionately on women. I hope I've contributed to that and I'm determined to keep accelerating it and ensuring that when COVID is over, work-life integration isn't. Jane, please come accept your award. So this next group of honorees all lead highly scaled organizations, each with valuations over a billion dollars. 
And you know, Deborah remarked to me last month how important seeing women leading organizations at scale is to inspire the next generation of female leaders. I couldn't agree more, <laughs> and I'm pretty happy about today's announcement. Krista Ensley is one of these leaders. Krista Ensley is Chief Executive Officer at Link, and to give you a sense of the kind of leader she is, she completed six acquisitions in her first year in the role to build out Link's ecosystem supporting student to state with accounting, finance, HR, meal management, nutrition, and other solutions for K-12 schools and SEAs so they can focus on educating students. Link is now serving 17.2 million students in 32,000 schools across all 50 states. I asked Krista what advice she would give other striving women leaders, and here's what she had to say. Ask for what you want and do what's right for you. When she had her first daughter, Krista told me that she took four years away from the standard leader track and worked part-time as a product manager. And she said she had to be tenacious in order to get her company to agree to that arrangement. And she did not take no for an answer. And even with that time away, she was still a CEO by the time she was 43. She now just wants to build a space that she wants to work in so that other people want to work there too. And she said to me, we have to lift each other up and we have to support one another every day. Well said, Krista, congratulations. Come accept your award. Smita Diora is the co-founder and co-CEO of Lead School. And she told me that when she was working as an accountant, you know, for major accounting firms, she actually stopped to ask herself the existential question, what difference is my life making and to who? Am I making a difference? Smita shared with me that when she started her nonprofit, she and her co-founder husband had two children under the age of three and that most people, friends and family included, told her she couldn't do both. That she'd absolutely and definitely neglect her children. And she told me that she used a lot of positive self-talk and she actually turned that classic case of mommy guilt into an absolute strength, using it to push herself to work harder at work and harder at home. Now Smita has the answer to her existential question. Lead School has grown from one small school eight hours outside of Mumbai to more than 4,500 schools reaching two million students, the majority of whom are from low-income families. Leveraging the Lead School platform for schools, students progress in, from an average of 40% mastery to 70% mastery in all subjects. So Smita's vision, tenacity, hard work, they all set the example in the EdTech community of women leaders, of all leaders, and at home for her own children to see. Please join me in congratulating Smita Diora. Smita, please come get your award. Okay, and now, from the great state of Minnesota, and I'm not biased at all, <laughs> Jamie Candy is CEO of Edmentum. Jamie is actually in her second term of service with Edmentum, taking a break to lead Questar. And she knows the business inside and out because she has served in something like every single senior leadership role at Edmentum, except for perhaps CFO. I think there was one exception, and that might be it. 
She's led the growth of Inventum, including the acquisition of Apex Learning last year, and the organization now serves more than six million students, providing educators the resources and insights to build school around each student. You know, when she and I talked about the environment she's building at Edmentum, she described during the lockdown days of the pandemic, deliberately allowing her daughter doing schoolwork on the floor behind her to be visible on screen while she was in her video conference meetings as a visual indicator of a more welcoming, inclusive, and supportive workplace, one in which you can and should bring your whole self to work. You know, Dame, Jamie talks intentionally, and she cracked me up, about creating a difference compared to the workplaces that many of us came up through, where if you got a seat at the table, you sat there with your bladder full because you were afraid to leave it. When I asked her about a lesson she's learned and advice she would give to other women leaders and their accomplices, she said, be an ally. You always have time to help someone figure out how to get to the next step. Jamie, please come accept your award. Well said. Okay, in closing, Kim, Jane, Krista, Smitta, Jamie, you are all exemplary leaders. And of course, you're exemplary leaders because of what you're doing with education and technology. What you're doing to change the shape of education and to provide access to all people to the future, a bright future. But you're also exemplary leaders because of what you do and the example you set in the environments that you lead. And it's a great reminder and a great inspiration to all of us to think about not just the goal that we're striving to reach externally, but the example that we set internally, the support that we provide one another, the example and the support that we set for our teams. When we think about how we lead, our teams, how we lead our organizations, that is an opportunity in itself to change the world. So let's do it intentionally. In closing, let's just take one minute here. Look around you. Look to the left, look to the right, look behind you. We all come from different backgrounds, different identities and different experiences. And we undoubtedly disagree on a range of things. But we are united here in this community in common purpose. We are united in ensuring that all people have equal access to the future. And when we, as we celebrate one another and support one another, we need to also use our seats at these tables, at this table, to help and support others who need it, others who are striving. I, you know, I'm struck in a conversation with one of my family members about how this event and this community was the stuff of dreams for many of our mothers and many of our grandmothers. And now we are here and we make that real. We are the example, the living example today and for the next generation of leaders. So let's use that. Let's keep using that to change the world. Our five honorees today are the living example and the embodiment of leaders who are not only working to change education, but they themselves are changing the ed tech community we work in for the better. So I'd like to say thank you to each of them and thank you to you for your leadership because you doing what you do every day helps change the world. Please give yourself a round of applause. Thank you.